welcome to Tutti Attack Tuesday. Oh my gosh, today's already just been so insane and hectic and stressful. I need to go record the podcast with Eric. So I'm very glad it's a Tortilla Talk Tuesday because that means I won't have as much editing to do as I usually do today. But we did go see some butterflies today. We went to a little butterfly exhibit at the museum and that was super funzy. So I'll show you some of that. Sweetheart, I love you. You see any butterflies? It's behind my booty. It's behind my booty. <laughs> I'm about to do the podcast with Eric, but before I could do that, I had to switch out some rock stuff. Ah, I'm dropping pieces, oh my god. But yeah, we've been having a lovely time with my in-laws who are in town. Oh wait, I just messed that up. Oh my god, I'm so stupid. I just forgot to put the lid on this rock tumbler. This is why I should not vlog while I'm doing my rocks, because I can't pay attention. I'm excited to answer a bunch of tortilla talk questions later tonight, and I did take a sneak peek at some of the questions you guys had for me, and the question I get all the time is about rock tumbling and where someone should start if they want to start doing it, and tips and tricks and whatever. I've done a video before talking about rock tumbling, but I do think I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks tonight, so stay tuned for that. But right now, I'm just going to make sure that these rocks in the vibratory tumbler are doing okay. Oh girl, this slurry is looking pretty thick. That is very thick, I need to get it wet. All right, now it's flowing a little bit better so I can put this lid back on. Now I'm gonna go podcast with Eric. See you later. We just finished recording the podcast and Eric was like, oh, I was gonna give you a present while we were filming the podcast, but then I forgot. So he just gave it to me right after, you guys. Look at this hat, it's sparkly. Pink Bounty Club! I'm so excited! I was just looking online like for the perfect hat to wear to Chaperone and now I don't even have to look anymore because I have it. Literally a rhinestone pink pony club hat. My husband knows me so well. He's such a good gift giver. I'm so excited! The sun is setting and that means that it's not as hot. It also means that the bees aren't as active. So I'm making another bouquet of flowers for my backyard. Pretty! Look at this purple one. I didn't even know I had purple roses in my backyard. So pretty! Cut! You're coming with me. Look at my peaches. Ooh, something got to it. Something started eating it. Oh man. See, it always happens with my freaking peaches. Animals always get to them before I can. Beautiful. Look at that. So beauteous. I'm a professional. Maisie, do you like my pretty flowers? Yeah. yeah. Smell them? It's so good. So good. Hello everybody, it's time for Tortilla Talk with Colleen, where I answer all of your questiones. Let's get started with your questions. Daisy is so crazy tonight. <laughs> Tabby said, Tortilla Talk question, what are your favorite Olivia Rodrigo songs you're most looking forward to for her concert? I'm just looking forward to the concert as a whole, but I really like The Grudge. That might be my favorite song of hers right now. Daisy never really plays. She's not a super playful cat, so the fact that she's playing right now is so cute to me. But anyway, I love all Olivia Rodrigo stuff, so I don't care. It's just gonna be fun. I'm excited. AJS said, random question, when you were cracking open the geode, what was the interesting bike thing beside you? I did say it was a random question. Haha. -ha. The interesting bike thing beside 
inside me when I was cracking open a geode yesterday was the bike from Haters Back Off. Eric's character in my Netflix show Haters Back Off, he rode this ice cream bicycle and that is the bicycle. They sent it to me after the show was canceled. They asked if I wanted anything from the set and I was like, can I have the bicycle? And I actually have the little mini bicycle too that the little Patrick rode. So it is going to get rusty and ruined since it's outside. We usually keep it inside or under like a shaded patio area or something, but it's there temporarily while we figure out a good spot for it. Oh my goodness, Daisy! 777 Indra said, Tortilla Talk question, have the twins or Flynn figured out what curse words are or have they said them? Yes, they have. So the twins actually a few times have said cuss words not knowing what they meant. To be honest, it's totally my fault and Eric's fault because we have potty mouths. We both cuss like sailors. The other night Eric was doing dinner and he said something happened, like he spilled or one of the kids spilled something or I don't remember what happened, but something happened and Maisie goes, are you kidding me <laughs> so yes the kids have all cussed and the thing is we don't get upset with them or yell at them or tell them it's bad or wrong or whatever what we do in that situation is apologize because we know it's our fault because that means that they've heard us say those bad words so we just explain really sweetly and we don't want to embarrass them so we usually just explain like you know what that's actually not a nice word and I'm so sorry I think I said that word around you and I shouldn't have said that 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 was my fault I'm so sorry it's an interesting word isn't it do you want to know what it means like we try to explain explain it and like make it like a positive nice thing and just let them know that like that was our fault and not theirs because it is like if they're saying bad words they heard it from us and Flynn is our little cuss word police because if I ever accidentally cuss around Flynn he will straight up just be like mommy you said a bad word don't say a bad word you need to apologize and I'm like I'm sorry thank you for letting me know but it's usually just like if I stub my toe or like I'm in another room and I don't think the kids can hear me I'm like ah oh, what the f or like oh it smells like s-h-i-t you know stuff like that like I'll randomly say when I don't think the kids are paying attention but funny thing kids are usually paying attention when you don't think they're paying attention. And they're usually not paying attention when you want them to pay attention. That's a fun thing about kids. Daisy, you are cracking me up right now. Eliza said, why are all the kids blonde with blue eyes? I don't understand. Well, honey bun, it's called genetics. And it's called, they don't have my genetics. <laughs> I'm just kidding, they do. Um, they all have blonde hair because Eric and I had light hair when we were young. I think that Flynn has Eric's hair. I think that Wesley has my hair. And I think Maisie has mystery hair. I'm assuming by the time the kids are 10, so Certainly they're gonna have brown hair. It's just gonna take a little bit for it to turn brown. Maisie's hair is a total mystery. There's not a lot of people in my family with straight hair and her hair is straight, but it's not like silky straight. It's like a frizzy straight, so there's like texture to it. But it's certainly not curly. And I don't know anyone in my family that has hair like that. So I don't know what Maisie's hair is gonna be like. But as far as their eyes, Eric and I both have brown eyes. So you would think that we would have all brown eyed children, but that is not the case. We couldn't believe that Flynn's eyes stayed blue because sometimes babies' eyes change color, like, after, like with in the first year of their life, but Flynn's eyes never changed. And we're like, that's so crazy. We got a blue-eyed kid. Like, we certainly aren't gonna get any more blue-eyed kids. And then when we found out that we were having twins, when I envisioned the twins, I always envisioned brown-eyed, brown, curly-haired kids or brown-eyed, blonde kids. I thought there was no way we'd have blue-eyed kids. But here we are with three blue-eyed kids. There actually are a lot of blue eyes on my side of the family, though. So my mom's eyes are brown, but most of the people in her family, like siblings and parents and so on have blue eyes. Now my dad's side of the family, a lot of them have blue eyes too. So once you really think about it, the blue eyes aren't that surprising because it does seem like there's a lot of blue eyes on my side of the family. So somehow all three of them got that gene. But I do think that all three of my kids are gonna end up having like a grayish blue or grayish hazel eye with brown hair. That's what I think. Ricky said, have you ever tried Dr. Pepper and pickles? I saw someone talking about this. I think I saw a TikTok or something where someone was driving through Sonic and she literally ordered Dr. Pepper with pickles pickles in it and they didn't even like flinch or say like oh that's weird they're just like yeah of course we're gonna get you that and it was like something that you can order like hello what are you talking about I love pickles I think Dr. Pepper is fine it's not my beverage of choice but like I enjoy Dr. Pepper if I must like if coke is not an option and if root beer is not an option I will go for Dr. Pepper but I've never thought to put it with pickles but I love freaking pickles so I'm gonna try it maybe I'll try it tomorrow that's a very good idea thank you Isabel said hey Colleen if you had to give advice to someone who wants to start getting into and collecting rocks but 
can't spend lots of money. What products would you recommend are the essentials to start with rocks? I love you so, so much. Big hugs. I did a video where I sent my mother-in-law a huge box of rocks and grit and stuff, and I kind of explained my entire process in that video. So do me a favor. If you guys ever see anyone leaving this comment, because I get it a lot, send them the link of that video where I like give my mother-in-law all the rock tumbling stuff, or you can also send them this video. I'll give you a little bit of a rundown here, but it's not going to be as in-depth as that one. Number one, you have to have a lot of patience. So order some of that up on Amazon because it takes a very freaking long time. I would just get a rock tumbler from like Amazon. There's a National Geographic rock tumbler that works great. I have a lot of them. You don't have to get a super fancy pants rock tumbler. That is not necessary, but you can find rock tumblers on sale or with coupons and stuff on Amazon every once in a while. So just keep your eye out for like a coupon or 10% off, 20% off. Because rock tumblers usually run around like 50-ish bucks, which is expensive, but I have found them on sale for $30 before. You can also find rock tumblers at like Walmarts, craft stores, Ross, Marshalls, things like that. Like sometimes they'll have rock tumblers and you can get them for pretty cheap there too. The other thing to know is you can't really just like tumble any rock. I mean, I guess you could, but a lot of rocks will just like disintegrate. There's a hardness scale with rocks and the rocks that are harder do better in the tumbler because they're not gonna just disintegrate or get all scratched up. So whether you're getting rocks online or you're looking for rocks out in the wild like I do, I would say to learn how to identify rocks so you know what you're looking for and look for things like quartz or agates or jaspers, things of that nature, things that are like hard and tough and strong. And I'd say my biggest piece of advice for people who are starting out is do not follow the instructions on a rock tumbler that you buy at the store or on Amazon. The instructions are wrong. The grit that they give you won't do it. Like it will not work. Like if you tried to tumble using the instructions and the grit that comes with a rock tumbler, you will not get polished rocks. Like it will not happen. I mean, maybe it could, but like it's not gonna happen. I learned how to tumble rocks by watching a YouTube channel called like Michigan Rocks or something like that. I'll link him, but I it's this man who's really good at tumbling rocks and he makes really long videos that are very in depth and describes every detail of how to tumble rocks. And he did one actually with the National Geographic rock tumbler. And that's how I learned to tumble rocks. I watched that video and I watched a bunch of his videos and I took notes and like wrote it all down. So I would recommend watching people who are really good at rock tumbling on YouTube and getting tips and tricks for the, from them because that's what I do. And I would also recommend buying really good grit. There's a great rotary rock tumbler starter pack kind of thing on the Rock Shed, which is like literally a website that sells rocks and rock tumblers and it's incredible and I love it. There's also grit that works pretty well on Amazon. I think it's called like Poly Pellets or something like that. I used that for a while before I started using Rock Shed. So those are all my tips and tricks. Also, I would recommend ceramic media instead of the plastic pellet media. Seriously, go watch a how-to video on how to tumble rocks on YouTube and you'll learn everything that you need to know. I am not as good as all those people are and so that would be my biggest recommendation. That answer was way too long. I apologize. Okay. And he said, what is your favorite summer memory from growing up? I have so many lovely memories from growing up, but a summer memory, I would say we would make a slip and slide in our front yard with like big black tarps on the front lawn and we'd put like soap and water all over that and that was always really fun. I grew up by the beach and so I loved um, going to the beach all the time as a kid and I also loved taking this really long walk from my house to the beach and this walk was awesome but it was long. I had to walk like across a creek, across like a long meadow and I didn't end up at the beach. I ended up on this tall cliff that was a vertical drop down to the beach like and I'm talking like a cliff like it was high and I have very fond memories in high school of walking to this cliff and then rock climbing down the cliff in a bikini and flip-flops. It was like rock climbing but like we'd find like kind of trails but kind of not like it was pretty vertical like it was hard to do and within the cliff was caves is what I thought but really it was just like cliff that was probably about to collapse but me and my friends would go and like hang out in these little like divots inside the cliff and we'd climb all the way down to the beach and hang out at these beaches that were pretty much private beaches because they were just along this like vertical cliff side. Looking back now, I cannot believe I ever did that and I can't believe I survived. That is so incredibly dangerous. Like I would never let my kids do that. Those cliffs collapse all the time. People fall off those cliffs and not survived, which is tragic and awful. And I can't believe I ever did that, but I do have really fond memories of going on that walk across the creek, crossing this huge meadow in the sun and it was so pretty and then getting to the cliffs and looking at the view and then climbing down the cliff to get to the beach and then seeing like sea lions and dolphins and like just laying out and hanging out with friends. So many memories 
that are so lovely doing that, but it's also so stupid and dangerous. I cannot believe I ever did it. Ice Cream Blandwich said, Tortilla Talk question, what's something you feel like you missed out on your childhood that you make an effort to do differently for your kids now? When I read that comment, the first thing that popped in my mind was Halloween. I never had to celebrate Halloween until I was like 13 years old and I was really sad about that as a kid. But in my house, Halloween was like a satanic holiday. And so I was not allowed to dress up and go trick-or-treating. I never went trick-or-treating until I was 13. And then when I did go trick-or-treating, I was told I was too old by the people who were opening the doors. I felt lame like going trick-or-treating like there weren't other kids my age trick-or-treating at that time like that night and I didn't really realize how fun and awesome Halloween could be until I became an adult and so I love Halloween with my kids like I love it. It is so fun. It's so exciting. They all have like eight different costumes and we celebrate Halloween like 20 times. Like, I love it. But I'm not like mad that I didn't get to do Halloween as a kid. Like I think my parents were just doing the best that they could and that's what they thought was right at the time for us and our safety and I'm not mad at them I don't think they did anything wrong I just think that like they were doing the best they can and I was bummed that I didn't get to do a trick-or-treating as a kid but like, now I just get to do it with my kids okay I'm answering this question because I get this question all the freaking time okay happy cactus great name by the way said I've missed a handful of videos how is Gus has he come up or been on camera at all since she's been back I am telling you guys if Gus is not in a video that I get comments about Gus like if I don't feature Gus and show him or if he's not in the background or something in a video like I guaranteed will get comments like where's Gus what happened to Gus why is Gus gone where's Gus I've addressed this a few times in vlogs because I get this question so often Gus is great Gus is fine and dandy Gus is a happy camper Gus is like more your classic cat he's like leave me alone I'm doing my thing unless I want you to cuddle me and pet me then I will come to you and I will let you pet me for approximately 10 seconds before I try to kill you. I think people ask this question because Daisy is so frequently in my videos because she loves the camera. She loves to be with me 24 seven. Like she's always by my side. She's an extremely needy cat and Gus just isn't. Gus likes to do his own thing. He just likes to be lazy and sprawl out in the sunshine. Also, Gus doesn't really like to go around the kids. They've never hurt him. They've never touched him. They've, they've tried to pet him a couple of times and Gus is just like, ugh. And so they're like, well, he's no fun. And so they don't really go around Gus very much and Gus doesn't really want to be around them because they're absolutely crazy and so most of my day is spent with my kids or in my office and he's never in my office and he's never really around the kids so that's why you don't see him very much but he is around and he is a happy large dramatic ball of fluff but I'll try to show him more often because I think it really worries people when I don't show Gus. For TikTok question will we ever see Miranda again I just know she would slay the song espresso I want to see Miranda do espresso so bad. That's so funny I was just talking to Eric about this how like I were to do Miranda right now I'd be so excited to do espresso because first of all I would pronounce that word espresso but there are so many songs I think about all the time I'm like oh my gosh I wish I could cover this as Miranda like espresso I want to do who's afraid of little old me yes and by Ariana Grande like yes and sing that poop with your drinks like I would love to do all these. There's so many songs and I'm like, oh, I wish I could do that as Miranda. Thinking about like the Taylor Swift, like Eras tour and all the things that I would like want to parody. Like the whole, who's afraid of little and me like, so I leave from the gallows and I levitate down your whole street. Like I just imagine like a live show where like I'm on some really lame, janky little platform being pushed across in a white, ugly, like toilet paper gown or something singing that song or even like Sabrina Carpenter's new song the please 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 that song the part where it's like I beg you don't embarrass me mother that part would be so fun to do as Miranda. I have so many like fun ideas. Like I still feel like my brain is so wired to like imagine any and all pop culture moments. Like how would Miranda interpret that? What would Miranda do with that? That was how my brain thought for geez like almost 20 years or something like that so teen, I don't know it's a very long time so I still think that way I still whenever I hear a pop song or there's something that's trending online or there's some big pop culture moment or meme or like oh my god karma by Jojo Siwa like are you kidding I am desperate to perform that as Miranda I've thought about it so many times <laughs> but yeah I don't know 
know. It is what it is. I don't know. But um, it's just funny you brought that up because I, I was just talking about seeing es espresso as Miranda the other day. Heather said, tortilla talk question. How do you keep that white rug clean with cats and children and rocks and slime? Do you ever get anxious about getting it dirty? Oh, this white rug? It is disgusting. It's actually not clean at all. It is horribly disgusting. There are so many stains in it. It is tangled. It, there's stuff in it. Like when you walk on it, you can feel like rocks and beads and like random stuff in it like oh it's filthy it kind of looks clean at first glance but when you get close up it ain't cute kind of like me well i think i'm gonna go spend the rest of the evening singing and editing and so that's what i'm gonna go do thanks for watching and i will see you guys soon okay bye